guys welcome back to the channel today we're diving into linux basics for everyone but especially for those of you who are into hacking or just getting started in cybersecurity. this video is inspired by the book linux basics for hackers it's a great resource and personally i'm planning to make a full course on linux for hackers over time right here on this channel so stick with me and follow along in this video everything we do will be on kali linux which is part of the linux family just note this, most Linux commands and functions work the same across different Linux distros, so even if you're using something else, this will still help you. If you've already installed your Linux OS, then you're good to go. Let's jump right in. Here's the thing, hackers like action. We like building stuff, breaking stuff, testing limits. Most of us don't want to sit through hours of boring theory before doing anything cool. So, this video is all about giving you the basic skills to start using Kali Linux right now. We're not going super deep just yet, this is your starting point. You'll learn just enough to begin exploring Linux on your own. And in the next parts we'll go into more detail step by step. Alright, let's kick off this journey into the world of Linux basics for hackers. Before we dive deep into terminal commands and start messing around with systems, let's get comfortable with a few key terms. These are words you're going to hear over and over again in the hacking scene, so better understand them now than get confused later. First up, binaries. When hackers talk about binaries, we mean files that are executable. They can run on their own. If you're from a Windows background, think of them like .x files. In Linux, binaries are usually stored in folders like slash user bin or slash user s bin. These include common tools like ps, cat, ls, and if config. You'll be using all of these, trust me. Some hacking tools are binaries too, like Aircracken, used for wireless attacks, or Fiesnort, used for detecting intrusions. Next, case sensitivity. In Linux, desktop is not the same as non-desktop, or desktop. They're three totally different things. If you get a file not found error, double check the spelling, and especially the upper lowercase letters. This is one of the first things that trips up people who are used to Windows. Then we've got directories. A directory is just a folder. That's it. In Linux, everything is organized using directories. It's kind of like a tree structure. You've got folders inside folders and that's how everything stays organized. Let's talk about home directory. Every user in Linux has their own personal space in the slash home folder. For example, if your username is Alex, then your home directory is slash home slash Alex. Any files you create or download will usually end up there by default. Think of it like your own workspace. Kali Linux is a special version of Linux built just for hacking and penetration testing. It comes packed with hundreds of pre-installed tools, so you don't have to waste time downloading each one. Tools for wireless hacking, password cracking, social engineering, it's all in there. Another core concept. Root. Root is the super user in Linux. This is the admin account. The one that can do absolutely anything. Add users, install programs, change system settings, delete files, everything. As a hacker or pen tester, you'll often need root access to run certain tools or gain full control of the system. Many tools actually won't work unless you're running as root. Let's move on to scripts. A script is just a list of commands saved in a file. When you run it, the system reads the file and executes the commands one by one. Most hacking tools are just smart scripts. They can be written in different languages, bash, python, perl, or ruby. Right now, Python is the most popular scripting language in the hacking community, so it's good to start learning it. The shell is your command center. It's where you type in commands and get stuff done. The most common one is called bash, short for born again shell. You'll be using bash in almost every situation while working in Kali. Other shells exist, like zsh or csh, but we'll stick with bash for now. Finally, terminal. The terminal is the window you use to talk to the shell. It's a command line interface, or CLI. It looks simple, just a black box with text, but this is where all the power is. Real hackers live in the terminal. All right, now that you've got these basic terms down, we're ready to get our hands dirty and start working inside Kali Linux. You're about to build the foundation every hacker needs, so stay locked in and let's move. Let's jump in and take a quick tour of Kali Linux. It's better to take a quick look at two core things you need to know right away. The terminal interface, where all the real hacking happens, and the file structure, how Linux organizes everything behind the scenes. These two are the foundation. Once you get comfortable with them, everything else will start to make sense. 
The terminal is located here, in the top panel. We will navigate to it by clicking the icon that looks like a small black screen. Once you click it, the terminal window will open. The terminal is the command line interface, or CLI. This is where you type commands to control Kali Linux directly. Hackers use the terminal because it gives fast and powerful access to the system. This terminal opens the command line environment, called the shell. The shell lets you run commands on the operating system and write scripts to automate tasks. Linux has many different shell types, but the most popular one, and the default in Kali, is called bash. Now, as a quick example, if you want to change your password, you can use the command passwd. Just type passwd in the terminal, press enter, and follow the instructions to set a new password. Now, let's talk about the Linux file system. Linux organizes files differently than Windows. In Windows, you have physical drives like the C drive, but in Linux, there are no physical drives at the base. Instead, Linux uses a logical file system. Everything starts from a single top point called slash. This slash is known as the root of the file system. You can imagine it like an upside down tree, where everything grows from the root at the top. Just a quick note. Don't confuse this root with the root user we talked about earlier. At first, these terms can be confusing, but don't worry. You'll get used to them as you work more with Linux. Now let's explore the main directories inside the Linux file system, starting from the root. The root is at the top of everything. Think of it as the trunk of the tree, and everything else branches out from there. Here are some of the most important directories you'll see. Root. This is the home directory of the root user, the most powerful user in the system, etc. This is where most system configuration files are stored. These files control how and when programs start up. Home. This is where all regular users have their personal folders. For example, if your username is Ali, your home directory is slash home slash Ali, MNT. This is where temporary file systems are mounted. For example, if you attach another hard drive, Linux can mount it here. Media. This is where USB drives, CDs, or SD cards are usually mounted automatically. Bin. This folder holds binaries, which are the core applications and commands Linux uses, similar to .exe files in Windows. Lib. This is where libraries are stored shared code that programs need to run. They're similar to DLL files in Windows. We'll be using most of these directories later in this series, so getting familiar with them early on will help you a lot. Now, one important tip. When you're just doing normal tasks, like browsing, opening files, or using tools like Wireshark, don't log in as the root user. Why? Because if someone hacks your system while you're logged in as root, they immediately gain full control. Instead, always log in as a regular user for day-to-day -day stuff. Only use root when you need full access, like for installing tools, changing settings, or doing deep system work. But for now, since we're just practicing and learning, staying logged in as root is okay.